Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. Hey Moose. Hey Cat. How are you today? Good. How are you? Well, I'm better because I got to spend time on the water with you and producer Sarah last night, and it just did my heart so much good to be in your presences. Mm -hmm. Presences. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hi, production person. Hello. That's your name on Zoom today. Yeah. Yeah, we were on the water, which basically means we just floated on the top of the water, right? On a pontoon boat. The boat was floating and moving. We had fun. And hey, I figured out what that alarm was. So we were oh, like really? driving along in the lake last night and I was in charge because I am in charge when it comes to driving. <laughs> I am not in charge. I am not, not in, in charge. charge. We got to talk about that. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I have sung that song this week. Like very, very, I've like belted it out of my <laughs> diaphragm. <laughs> like I am not in charge. I am not in charge. And then there are a few times where I'm like, oh shit, I am in charge. <laughs> oh yeah. That sucks when you realize, oh wait, actually I, the buck does stop here. It does stop here. <laughs> here and on the boat last night i was gladly in charge and so this alarm went off that we've never heard before and so um doing a little research this morning i found out that there may be flooding in the water pump area oh boy that's terrifying cat what does that mean well it basically means that um i have we could have sunk we could have sunk yeah that's basically what it means yeah yeah are you kidding me That's Sarah's worst nightmare. Well, I'm glad it didn't happen, Sarah. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, how bad is it? (laughs) Isn't that the question that we all have in life right now? Like, Mm -hmm. okay, I understand how I'm feeling and this feels like a panic attack, but how bad is it really? (laughs) Yeah. Tell us, Kat. (laughs) Well, this is how bad it is. Uh. It's so bad that there is some sort of system on the boat that says, hi, there could be a problem. Oh, that is vague. So it, it, it's different than going like, why do I feel like water is coming up to my feet and now my knees and now my waist and my boat is sinking? Like that didn't happen. But it could have. And that's the point. It just said, hi, there might be a problem. Okay. I'm going to compare this to the body's nervous system since we Ooh. are a body, body work, work podcast. podcast. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we all know it. Yeah. So what you're saying is there is a system inside of the boat that alerts the human that something is not right here. Yeah. So I would like to make, we had a whole conversation about panic attacks And my experiences and your experiences and Sarah's experiences. And I specifically said, (laughs) as we're standing on the boat that is sinking that we don't realize is sinking, (laughs) I said, you know, I think a panic attack is your body's way of raising its hand and saying, we're not okay over here. (laughs) So I just find that interesting that that conversation happened while our boat was sinking. Our bodies knew that something wasn't right. <laughs> kind of like the boat's body knew that something wasn't right. It's such a beautiful parallel metaphor. Yeah. Hyperbole enigma. So the boat was having a panic attack. The boat was having a, a I, I don't know if it was a pan. Yes, I guess it was. I guess it was a panic attack. Yep. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. H- how many miles would you say we went out <laughs> and how deep were we in? <laughs> How long were we gone? Did anyone know we were there? Uh, We were gone for about two hours, and I don't think that we were ever more than a mile from the marina. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The the good news is, is there were lots of other boats around. Yeah. So if we would have slowly started sinking, I think we would have been able to get some rescue. Yes. Great. We would have been able to dial 911. Well, and we can swim, you guys. Right, we are all swimmers. I don't know. I don't know. You think we have we just life get jackets. In the water and we're like, now what do we do? <laughs> but it's in the middle of the lake. I guess you just tread. You tread until you get help. 
I would probably die. Right. And we have flotation devices. We have, by law, we are required to have life jackets on the boat. Okay. I'm next time I'm wearing it the whole time. (laughs) Isn't that such an Enneagram six? Like I did not know those were on the boat. Next time I'm wearing it the entire, look at her face. I might bring my own. Maybe I'll buy my own cool life jacket. You totally can. And I support that. I bought my own life jacket because I didn't want the ugly generic like orange one. I'm like, if I'm going to be caught in an emergency situation, I at least want to look cool. You know, so it's kind of like knowing that if you have to go to the ER in an ambulance, that at least you're wearing a nice pair of underwear. You know, it's like kind of the same concept. Wait, but if you're going to the ER, it is an emergency. Right. And so you just gotta, I, I have, I will tell you when I've taken myself to the ER before I have taken a bath prior to, <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Like I have been doubled over in pain being like, I am not going to go up in there without some unshaved legs. Oh my gosh. That'd be the last thing I would think of if I felt like I needed to go to the ER. Isn't that different? Yeah. It, well, you just said, would you change your underwear? Cause you just said, yeah, you, would you? I'm just saying one should always be wearing a decent pair of underwear in case one should have to go to the ER. Oh, so you're saying like to start the day. Yeah. In case you have to go to the ER today, put on some good undies. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I just, I just had the thought, what happens from the time you put them on till the time you take them off that they become unclean? (laughs) Well, I'm not worried about them being unclean. I'm more worried about them. No, she wants good undies. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I got. Like sexy? Like you want to wear some lingerie up into the hospital? (laughs) (laughs) What? Okay. At this age, let's all, I do need to go back before I ask this question, but so I don't forget. The question (laughs) is. At this age, what makes a good pair of underwear? (laughs) But hold on. Back to the life jacket. You specifically said, if I get off the boat, like I don't want to be wearing an ugly color orange. Do we recognize that the orange is how people find you? That's a very good point. If you're out there wearing like some black pleather <laughs> yeah. flotation device, like they're not going to find yeah. you. Yeah. Then I am therefore camouflaged with the water, <laughs> which is right. not good for rescue operations. Okay. Fair enough. What color enough. is your life jacket? It's black. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you need to wear like a bright orange cap all the time. And bright orange (laughs) undies. Good undies. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Back to the undies. Yeah. The way this is going, I pretty much just don't ever want to go out on my boat again now. (laughs) And and let me be clear. Our listeners are probably like, what kind of dinghy are they on? This is a really super nice pontoon that... Mm -hmm. Um, Kathy Carpenter and Tex, which is what her Zoom title says today, owns. And so I want to be clear. This thing is the bomb diggity of pontoons, but we're going to have to rethink it since it's been flooded. Definitely. (laughs) It's not flooded. It said, it said, I'm starting to have a panic attack because something is not right in my body. Like that's all that happened. Okay. Okay, That's all that happened. And so it says, please help me. It's going to be at the bottom of the lake when you get back. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be at the bottom of the lake. Wow, that escalated quickly. It well. did. It did. And and um what I'm I'm also kind of sad and a little bit nervous about is um some of my um bodywork friends and colleagues listen to the podcast and I just took them out on the boat last <laughs> week. <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I'm thinking like they're yeah. all going like were we not safe with you <laughs> guys? We were 100% safe. The boat did not have a panic attack until yesterday. Correct. So While we were out together, while it was raining and the wind was nuts and we still decided to drive fast, guys, like we were okay. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it was fun. And then we tried to put the cover of the boat back on together and we were like, how many body workers does it take (laughs) to put a cover on a boat? And the answer was at least seven. (laughs) (laughs) I know that feeling. Last night when I was trying to help put that thing on. It's quite simple. You just snap it to the side of the boat. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's kind of like when you button your cardigan with the wrong button. Like once you get one wrong, you screwed up the whole situation. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) totally. 
tell everybody. <sighs> okay, back to undies. So <laughs> I would like for us to go around. We're going to start with Sarah and then go to you, Kat. And then it gives me the most time to think about what my ideal, at 43 years of age, what my ideal underwear are. And I know what they are because I buy them time and time again. And I'm so pleased with them. And every morning that I put them on, I think myself again for what I've done in purchasing them. So I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I was thinking like this pattern is so common where it's like it is. you pose a question and then you give yourself the most time to answer it. And it just always makes you look like the best. I know. Okay. So I'm <laughs> going to put myself on the line. My vulnerability, my heart is open. Oh. Tell us about your good undies. Okay. I'm going to even tell our listeners the um, brand because it's on Amazon. Okay. So, so here, here, what's up so as a lady gets older <laughs> is there something in your throat i think so at first i was just trying to get everyone's attention and then is it <laughs> there really was something about, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay better all right uh as a lady gets older you know sh- she transitions from like cute petite low cut on the front underwear to the fullest possible coverage that holds everything in. And I'm not talking about Spanx. Spanx are only for special occasions. And honestly, I haven't worn any in like, well, that's because of COVID. Three years. Okay. (laughs) I am talking about straight up underwear. So there is this brand. Feel free to look it up, ladies. And I don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe you guys can help me. But it's W-I-R-A-R-P-A. Warpa? Wirapa. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Wirapa. Okay. Could I see your wirapa? Now you try it, Miss. Wirapa. Wirapa. <laughs> Very good. Good job. Thank nice. you. Nice. I can nice. roll my tongue. Okay, so these underwear, um, they really just I'm gonna show you a picture for those who are. <laughs> oh, those. oh! This is just turned PG-13. Yeah. Th- so these are these are like um, these are full coverage. Yeah. Full yeah. coverage. Yeah. Here's the title: We're r- r- <laughs> women's high waisted, high waisted mm-hmm. cotton underwear, ladies' soft full briefs, panties, multi pack. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, th- four and a half stars because they are full coverage. And when you wear them, you feel confident in your <laughs> hips and undercarriage that mm. everything is confidently held. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Mm. That's amazing. And um, are they expensive or are they affordable? Oh, let's look. Um, there's a four pack for $23. I feel like that's good. They're worth every cent. Yeah, so six bucks a pair. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll go next. Okay. Um, I had, um, for the longest time, I got um, Hanes boyfriend bikini cut panties at Target. Oh. They were my absolute favorite. The fabric was really, really soft. And they had, there's something about when it comes to underwear that I really enjoy and it's when it has kind of a wide band at the top Mm -hmm. where it's Mm -hmm. like very definitive like this is the boundary of the underwear oh and no one will pass through I I mean or maybe you can but at least I'm going to be fully aware of it because the boundary (laughs) is going to significantly change right? right and so I really enjoyed the softness yet the security in kind of the wide band um, and it had the little like square Hanes logo like right in the front so it looked kind of, like I, I like things that that look very like kind of preppy and uniform and so it's like the belt that you used to love to wear right Ooh. right exactly when I yes when I could still find a belt that would go around my waist that is <laughs> very similar um, and so for the longest time I used to love wearing the Hanes boyfriend bikini cut panties that they sold at Target and then Hanes stopped making them. 
What does the boyfriend part mean? Because usually that means they're boxers, but you're saying they're bikini cut. I, the only thing I can think that it means is that maybe the thick um, or the wide waistband. It's the oh, only thing like I it could, looks like boxers or something. Yeah, yeah, band, yeah. Like it kind of looks like, like if you think of like Hanes dude underwear, like skivvies, like I can only think of like what my dad used to wear, but it had a nice like wide band around the top. Wait, wait, so, you have said a word that I have only heard you say. In reference to what whitey tidies are. Oh, skivvies. Yeah, I never knew that word before you. <laughs> it's what my dad called his underwear. Skivvies? Is yeah, that like a skivvies. military thing? It may be. I don't know where he got it, but he Sarah, always can says. You look it up? Yeah, man, I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, so the Hanes panties were discontinued, and though I still have a few pair, between over the years and life and things that happen, um, you know, they've become soiled, they've become holy, like... Wait, 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 soiled? Soiled. Like, gone the bathroom in? Oh, um, no, but... <laughs> You know, other functions that happen with the female body. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, so we don't need to get too graphic here. And um, it it would be so unlike us, too. Right. Um, (laughs) And so anyway, so a few years back, a friend of mine said, hey, I have found these, like, kind of boyfriend-like boxer shorts um, at this place called Tomboy X. And um, she was like, you really should get a pair. They'd be great to swim in. Like, instead of having to put on, like, a bathing suit, it's, yeah. like, little, like, short, short type things or whatever. And so I bought a pair, and I noticed on their website that they, too, have a bikini cut version oh. of what they do. And so um, so what I do now is they're, like, $22 a pair, which yeah. I think is too much to pay for underwear. That is crazy. I, I must interrupt here because I have always thought that was ridiculous that they could yes. charge $20 for the smallest amount of material. Well, hey, if yeah. they're comfortable, though. Yeah, well, still. yeah, it's kind of like you pay for a brand name, you pay for the... It, it would, I, I just think that's ridiculous, Sarah. I'm with you. And so anyway, so what I do is it's one of the few companies where I am on their email list and I pay attention to when things go on sale. And Brilliant. so for mm-hmm. Memorial Day weekend, they were having a 50% off sale. And so I went and picked all of my favorite pair... And bought myself mm-hmm. like six pair of underwear at half Great. the cost. Yes. And just got them in the mail Great. like yesterday. And I'm so happy about it. Well, this is good timing that you, we did not plan this. So Sarah, tell oh, us no. about your underwear choices. I was uh, this whole time trying to think of something very witty and I just can't think of one. Um, I, well, you could just tell the truth. <laughs> okay. I'm with you, Moose, on the maximum coverage. <laughs> Maximum support here. I want to be hugged. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be held in my downtown Mm. carriage area. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It reminds me of my therapy appointment yesterday where I'd, I'd, my name on, on zoom. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Okay. I mean, we are a body work podcast, (laughs) but, uh, Hmm. great. Yeah. I was not working on my undercarriage yesterday, but (laughs) But um, Tex, who is one of my <clears throat> characters in my internal family systems, um, we had a conversation with him yesterday in my body work session. And through tears, we found out the support that he needed in order to evolve and become a more refined three-year-old um, was he just needed to be held. Mm. Aww. Yeah. yeah. So did you sweet. hold him in that I visualization? Did. Oh, my my therapist so and I held him together. That's oh. amazing. Did she hold you? Oh, no. You put your hands together. I didn't know if you curled yeah, up put- and she held you and then you held him. <laughs> like three spoons. I, I, she would suffocate if I did that. <laughs> that is not true and not okay to say that about yourself. No, it is, it is actually true. <laughs> Hi, could you please hold me? I know you're going to die, but I really need to be held right now. <laughs> I need you to acknowledge because I feel like you didn't hear it. Either that or I didn't get enough laughs out of it. It. And maybe I should wait until Sarah edits it. But you know how there's always Easter eggs in there because we didn't hear it because we talk over each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you hear me say like three spoons? Because no. I feel like yeah, 
You know, like the big spoon, the medium spoon, and the little spoon. Oh. Like you, you're holding your therapist, and she's holding Tex. Is what I was picturing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a set of Russian stacking dolls. Babushkas. Right. You're, you're, yeah, 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 yeah. Your therapist is holding you, holding Tex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not what happened, but it's a great visual. <laughs> well, that's what happened to me. The way you explained it. Yeah, me too. I thought it was great, <laughs> and I love it. Well, thank you. And I'm glad that text got to be held yesterday. It was, uh, it was a really good experience. That's amazing. Hi, friends and listeners. This is Kat from the Cat and Moose podcast. On behalf of Moose, producer Sarah and me, we'd like to really lean into what a beautiful, diverse and compassionate community we have with you, our listeners. Because your love and your hearts are so big and beautiful, we're inviting you to join with us to mourn with those who mourn. The suffering and pain that are happening in the world right now is the worst that we've seen in our lifetimes. From wherever you're listening right now, we invite you to join us in whatever way you share your love and light, prayers and positive energy to take this moment alongside us to do so in honor of those who are suffering mourning, grieving, and trying to find hope amidst tragedy. May we share in this moment of silence the highest of intentions. Um, I have a question for both of you, and I would like um, to be the last one to answer the question. Moose, I'm going to um, take a page from your playbook. Um, Does everything happen for a reason? I personally hate that saying. um, Because I feel like it is spiritual bypassing. Mm-hmm. You know, like instead of like just being with someone when something bad is happening, I feel like it's one of those like, let me just throw a dart at your eye mm-hmm. and tell you like it's going to get better because all of this accumulates. So <clears throat> as much as I hate that phrase, I do believe that there is a lesson in everything, like everything mm-hmm. that happens teaches us something. Mm hmm. So am I allowed to say that? Like, there's no definitive there. Like, I hate the phrase because it feels trite, but I do think everything kind of connects. And I almost said works for the good of those who love him. <laughs> oh, thank you, Romans 828. That was beautiful. So, so when I ask you the question again, do you believe that everything happens for a reason? Is your answer yes or no? Yes. Yes, but I don't want to say yes, but I do believe it. Okay. I don't think it's fair to use that in traumatic situations. Yep. Yep. Like, I, okay. But honestly, like, then I think about what happened in Texas and what happened in Buffalo. And I can't, I don't, I can't say yes to that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you say that? Oh, well, yeah. everything happens for a reason. That's no Yeah. So I don't know that I believe that. I'm sorry Mm. it's taken me so long to get here. Yeah. I think we should just shorten the phrase. Everything happens. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that would be very Taoist of you, Sarah. Yeah. Like that would be well, thank very, you. Thank very you. Taoist of you. That would be beautiful. Um, a beautiful example of the Taoist philosophy. I love that. Everything happens. Great. And why is that cat? Because it's just acceptance. It, it just, everything is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like we, we read the story about the farmer and his son one time where it's like, oh, he broke his leg. And the farmer was like, maybe. But basically it was just like everything happens. Yep. Mm-hmm. It just happens. Like, like life happens, death happens, things happen, mm-hmm. you know. And so, so yeah. Sarah, do you want to expound on that a little bit more? I, I think... Uh, it may be even what Moose was saying. Like, um, I don't want, I don't want to give, you know, something like what has happened with these school shootings or, you know, any other number of super traumatic thing that should have never happened, um, did. And I don't want to give a reason for that. Like Mm -hmm. there wasn't a reason for that. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. There shouldn't have been a reason for that. Maybe that's what it, it is. And so mm-hmm. I feel like it happened. Yeah. Like we can't change that. But the reason, I mean, I just, who could know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you think, Kat? I, it, here's what I think is I think that everything does happen for a reason. I think for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. I think that everything happens for a reason. I think that when we utilize that phrase in an effort to explain something Mm -hmm. or to offer consolation or comfort. I think the phrase is horrifically abused. Yeah. Yeah. Because to say, Hey, a school shooting happened. Well, everything happens for a reason. Well, fuck you. Yeah. Like that's not an okay response. Nope. Exactly. I agree. Do the seasons happen for a reason? Yes, they do. Does yeah. life unfold like it does for a reason? Is there action and consequence? Yes. I, I think that that is a given, but I think it is horrifically misused. And so I think mm. that it is um, very hard when we've got emotion attached to our experience of how it's been used it's hard for us to have clarity of mind to just answer the question. Right. Uh, here's something very interesting. I just looked up the definition of reason and so, both, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, both answers work like in two different respects. So one, a reason is a cause explanation or justification for an action or event. That's it. That's exactly what we're talking about. But on the flip side of it, Another definition of reason is the power of the mind to think, understand, and form judgments by a process of logic. And we cannot logically process those reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with everything you said, Kat. Like, I I hear you now that you've explained it that way. Like, Mm. there is a a reaction to what has happened. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, that's not what you said. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent active listening skills. Like you are amazing. No, no, no. I did. I felt it. You know, you know that Maya Angelou phrase, like you won't remember what people said, but you'll you remember, remember how, how they made, made you, you feel? feel. I felt great with everything you shared. <laughs> and the good news is I'll listen again when it's produced and it will mean something even more to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am amazed at how some of the things we say truly impact me when I listen back. To me too. <laughs> I'm like shit, man. Like Moose is smart. Like producer Sarah is smart, and like God, that sounded really smart. Like that's amazing. <laughs> it comes from your heart, and that is smart. Oh, I just made a oh, rhyme. Oh, you're a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so talking about being smart, it makes me think of school, yes. which makes me think of um, you are in a coaching certification program right now, Moose. I am. And I am getting dangerously close to the end of my core curriculum education as a professional body worker. And eventually, and eventually, if I if I pass the Implex, I'll be a licensed massage therapist, which is kind of neat. It is. Um, So wait, can you just take a breath? Because you're just you're like leaving no room for excitement. Yeah. That's really neat. Not just kind of. Everyone take a deep breath. 
Even this has been three years in the making. I mean, that's Maybe huge. More. We don't stick with anything, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> anything but the podcast and body work damn it <laughs> therapy and the podcast are our only yeah. things that we stick with yeah well then that just shows us what's important <laughs> and each other yes oh that's just so lovely the whole reason i bring it up is because of the subject of school and i had an experience this week that i wanted to tell you guys about and get your response to so um two of my last classes in our core curriculum are integrative massage and clinic. And so integrative is basically when they say, okay, we've taught you all this, all these different modalities. Now, how do you as your unique and precious self that is only you, how do you integrate that to what is a Cat Davis body work session? Mm -hmm. And so like, that's kind of the, the general goal of this class. And so last week we talked about energy and how some people can like see things in other dimensions and how some people can see auras and how some people can feel things. And it was kind of a, a very woo woo conversation. And then they said tonight for your practice, normally you practice with one another tonight. We have invited all of the staff and faculty of the school to come and receive from you. Oh, wow. Did that stress you out? Wait, all of them? Well, I mean, the equal number to how many students were in there. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So. <laughs> just like 50 people that walk in and they're like, these are 10 minute <laughs> sessions, go. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was like your final or something. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed for you. Again, the Enneagram <laughs> 6 of the podcast is like stressed out. She's like there with you. <gasps> a lot of that is yep. okay yeah continue and so it made me think of you moose especially because i thought what if you had to coach martha beck oh dear god yes great point cat tell us moose i would shit my britches <laughs> <laughs> i really would like can you imagine she's like okay i have this issue like i would just uh -huh. be defecating and peeing all over myself because I would be like this guru that has created this incredible curriculum that I've been learning from all of a sudden I, I literally would just melt like like the witch in the Wizard of Oz like, <laughs> you know what I would do and I only uh, I would only save this for my worst case scenarios I would just get off of zoom I would just be like hmm. uh, I just Died. Something happened. Yeah, like I died. Bye. Oh wow, wow. <sighs> that's that's kind of funny <laughs> that you say that because one of the students in class physically, tangibly tried to run out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a true flight or fight? Fight or flight or fall? Fright. 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 <laughs> Oh, that's man, amazing. that is something else. Like I, that is I, not I, a gift. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was, it was a gift. And the reason sure that they was. did it is because they've been evaluating all of our like feedback forms because we have to say like, okay, this was our experience in clinic and this was our experience, blah, blah, blah. And what they realized is that everybody was saying once they got over the nerves of working on their instructors that mm -hmm. the instructors gave the best feedback because they were familiar with the modalities. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like, it, so, so they said, because you guys said that we thought we would give you yet another opportunity to work on instructors so that you can get even more feedback. So once they That's put cool. it in that framework, I was really excited about like, mm -hmm. okay, I do get to work on one of my instructors and she gave me excellent feedback and it was That's a little cool. hard to hear because it there were there were constructive criticisms yeah um and i would much rather hear that from someone who i feel safe with in a learning environment as opposed to having a client who is paying me money to do something to help and support their body and then leave being like unfulfilled, you know, which yeah, I can't yeah. completely control. But, um, but it just, it made me think of you when it happened, Moose, like an immediate thought is I was like, Oh shit. What if Moose was surprised and had to coach Martha Beck? And I got so excited 
about how wonderful of an opportunity that would be for you. So I'm just letting you know, I'm going to, I'm going to ring up old Marty. Oh gosh, no, don't ever put that in the universe. Okay. So (laughs) I will say the closest I've gotten to that feeling is in our class, we have to coach each other, like our, our other classmates in front of an instructor, you know, so we have to do that six times. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of understand the stress of like every, but all eyes on you, but you said the like wrap up of how it was, but what happened inside of your body when all those people walked in <laughs> <laughs> and why, like what, like what were the voices in your head? Like, Oh my God, that's she teaches craniosacral therapy and is really, really good at it. Oh my God. That's Amanda. She has been a massage therapist for 30, maybe even 40 plus years and has become like a really good friend and like, Oh fuck. Like what if she finds out that I have no idea what I'm doing? Finds out. Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh. Awesome. Adam, he listens to the podcast. What if he finds out that I am a fraud? What if I am the worst massage therapist he has ever experienced and stops listening to the podcast and thinks I'm a terrible person. Oh gosh. Those were the things that were going through my mind. Jeez. And then you just went, you swallowed hard and we're like, okay, I got to do this yeah. cause I'm here. I mean, I had to do it. Like, I, yeah. I mean, I guess I could have run out of the room, but like, I do want to finish the class and graduate and, and all of that. And so, um, I was, I was really interested in that. Like I thought, you know, those people I just mentioned, I thought, well, you know, maybe they're going to pick my name. They did kind of like a draw straws thing almost, you know, and it's like, just pick a name. And, um, and the instructor I got is someone who I don't have, um, a long relationship with and who I don't know very well. So it kind of was a little bit of relieving that I was like, okay, I don't have all this like, um, attachment to, you know, oh my gosh. So so it was, it was a really, really um a cool exercise i think it's interesting because being in this kind of learning environment that you and i both have been in recently it's interesting to notice that we have an adverse reaction when we know we're gonna get um like constructive feedback like why here's my question Mm -hmm. i hope you're ready because i'm forming it as we speak (laughs) Why is one set of feedback better than the other? And I I think the only answer is attachment. Huh? Meaning if I get a massage from you and I say, Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. It was so amazing. It's so amazing. If I am you, I'm going, there has to be something that could have been better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, And then to leave that off and to not say like, But the minute that we get any kind of, in quotes, critical feedback, we think we're horrible people. Right. Right. And that is not true. Like, in reality, we're never going to grow unless we get Mm -hmm. feedback. Right. I'm just having this realization because, like you, as much as my butt cheeks are clenched tightly after I coach and and part of the, you know, the thing after is you know, how did you feel like you did? Then they ask the client, how did do you feel like they did? And then they get feedback, you know? And it's mm-hmm. like, I take that in, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but why can I not just take it in without being like, you dirty bitch. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like my, that's so funny. Like that was, that was very similar to when, when my, um, client on the table, she asked me a question. She said, well, she didn't say this. She told me at the beginning of the session, there is tension in my left erectors and in my right TFL. Oh, okay. Those, those were the things that she told me. And so she said in the session, you spent more time on my right side. And I'm wondering if that was intentional or unintentional. And I was like, Oh, I spent time on the wrong side because you said your left directors and I spent more time on the right as if I did not listen to anything you said. And I am awful, awful, terrible listener, terrible massage therapist. (laughs) Right. And then I was able to say, 
okay, the reason I did that, first of all, it was not intentional, except there was a piece that was intentional. I believe that one side of the body that is more healthy than the other can teach the other side of the body. Oh, So I wanted your right erectors to feel what it felt like to feel good. Hmm. And I invited your left erectors to observe how your right erectors felt when I held certain acupressure points under your back. And she was like, that's beautiful. And I was like, yes. And you told me that your left erectors were bothering you. And so my woo woo, Hey, can your erectors talk to one another may not have been the thing that was useful for you. And you just want me to work the thing that hurts. Mm -hmm. And so in the last part of the session, I kind of freaked out because I only had 20 minutes left and I didn't know what all to do. And I wanted to do some cranio and I wanted to address your feet and I wanted to blah, 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 blah. And so I just didn't spend as much time on the left side. And I felt like, I had to explain myself away for like 20 minutes when all she had was a curiosity. Yeah. And, you know, we, we use the phrase co-creation and coaching. And I would say in some ways you're doing that with your client as well. Mm -hmm. And she has the opportunity to speak up if she wants more of something. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's responsibility on both sides. And I hear you like, yeah, she just was curious. I want to know why, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a similar experience. I was coaching someone and I've had uh, three sessions with this person and I thought it was going terribly because it always is shorter than I expect it to be. And it seems very rushed on their end. And hmm. a friend of this person said to me, you know, um, <clears throat> she thinks you're amazing. And I was like, <laughs> what I am <laughs> like, it was one of those moments where I was like, in my mind, it, it isn't what, and I'm saying this all in quotes, maybe a successful coaching session could be, if that makes sense. Like, you know, I have this like Mount Everest of like these ahas that could happen during a session and all of this. And, and this client in particular is really just wanting what is my next step to get to, mm -hmm. you know, my mm -hmm. goal basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and they want very tangible things, which is fantastic, you know, and there may be a time where this person goes, I want to go deeper inside so that I can understand why this obstacle is getting my way, but that's not where they're at right now. Mm -hmm. And same situation. Like I was like, Oh, I'm doing something right. Like I, I <laughs> to me, it, it isn't, my expectation, but also I shouldn't have expectation. You know, I should just let each, well, I want it to feel like I'm present for them. That may be the only expectation that I need to have for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, like so that. it just was, is interesting to notice like the ego popping in there, even when we think we are incredibly enlightened, which we are just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we totally need to do an entire episode because I know our listeners have like unexplained things. 100%. Yes, they definitely do. Like, come on, we've all got something like that. We do. It could be synchronicities or ghost stories. It could be you sitting on your deck with some crystals and all of a sudden they started levitating. Mm -hmm. uh, like money just showing up out of nowhere. Or provisions of people leaving stuff on your doorstep that you needed that you never said out loud that you needed. Exactly. Like tampons. Oh. oh. <laughs> An insurance check coming in in the mail that you didn't expect. Exactly. Communicating with your animals. Oh, yeah. I've been visited by my dog, Sam. And I really think that, that my current dog, Belle, has got part of Molly Pig's spirit because she has like a hound dog and she's a golden retriever. <laughs> okay, what about when you see like on a clock, you constantly see like 1111 or 333? Or I wake up almost every morning at 427. Really? really? Yes. What about like premonitions or like dreams of things that come to pass? Like prophetic dreams. Oh, yeah. Maybe you were abducted by an alien and a UFO. I need to know about that. Yes, absolutely. So, so here's, here's what's going to stand out to me. 
I, I, you guys may have your own opinions and interests, but this is what me, producer Sarah, is looking for. You're looking for something juicy. I want to see every adjective and all of the colorful imagery that you can muster. So if writing is your style, then here's where to send that. Email us, hello at catandmoosepodcast.com. And if speaking is more your vibe, then you better leave me the most descriptive version of your story that you can give. Don't leave out a detail. And you can leave those messages for us here. 1-866-KATMOO5. We want your stories of the completely bizarre and unexplained. Like the time that you woke up and grandma was standing over you. (laughs) Send us your unexplained stories. Now. Okay, so I need you to answer me honestly what I'm about to ask you. Okay. And I mean, this is a question that could make you want to embellish the truth. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. Do I have to answer the question? No, you can just let, you can let Kat answer if you don't. Okay. All right. No pressure. Great. (laughs) You can just pass. (laughs) Why does she get a pass and I don't? (laughs) Because your name is on the podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's that's right. I mean, she's right. All right. Do you floss every day? No. No. Oh, that was easy. Do you floss sometimes? Yes. Yes. I would like to make a clarifying point, and this is not embellishing anything. It's just a clarifying point. That's fine. Um, I bought at the recommendation of my dental hygienist, Rachel, who is so completely awesome. She's like... She's like the body worker version of a dental hygienist. She's a great active listener. She's got a great personality, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, she made a recommendation to me because I told her I was like, I don't want to floss. I don't like to floss. I know it's important to floss, you know, and she said, I would encourage you to get a water pick. Yeah, she told me the same thing. Dude, it's a game changer. Have you gotten one? Oh, this, I have to interrupt this broadcast because (laughs) I bought one and I I got a generic one. It it has a really funny name, but it still works the same. And I actually love it. It took me a minute, but I remember having Moose try it for the first time (laughs) and I filled the thing up and I showed her how to turn it on. And I was like, now it's going to surprise you at first because it's shooting water into Mm -hmm. your mouth. Mm -hmm. I think we have a video of this somewhere. (laughs) uh, I don't know, but you you know, I'm like, you have to, you have to like kind of leave your mouth open. So the water comes out. Otherwise you're going to feel like there's a fire hose shooting down your throat. (laughs) Now she forgot all of my instructions. No, I did it. It felt like there was a water, a a fire hose pouring into my mouth. It was uh, obtrusive and uh, it was um, all over the mirror. It was all over the, uh, it went everywhere because I don't think you should shoot things in your mouth when you could drown. We've covered this earlier in the podcast. No. How in the, the world would you drown from a water pick? The the thing's only like two cups. I think it's the generic version. I think you we I think someone has to buy the actual expensive kind. Oh, it's because I got the Amazon brand. Yeah, because I think the power of the generic version like took me out. Oh, cat. Well, I, I bought the one that Rachel recommended. I, I bought the one. She was like, it's a little expensive. It's like $76. You can get it on Amazon. And I'm like, I'm willing to try anything if it's going to help my like kind of dental hygiene, just because like, I always want to have like good teeth and good breath and stuff like that. And it's been a game changer for me. The kind of shit that lives in between <laughs> my teeth <laughs> Is absolutely yeah. phenomenologically fascinating. Like Phenomenal sometimes I logically. see that shit come out in the sink and I'm like so grossed out that I almost barf. Oh my Whoa. gosh. And I'm like the fact that there have been years of my life where I have not asked these things to leave my mouth is, is, is kind of like shocking to me. It, this kind of reminds me of the, the thing that has now scarred me for the rest of my life that you shared in the last episode mm. about fingernails and hookworms. Mm. And I can no longer 
live the same way that I once did a week ago. Well, Ruthie, Ruthie, one of our listeners wrote in and said, just so you guys know, it makes me want to vomit imagining someone cleaning their dirty fingernails with their teeth, which is what the hookworm story was. Yeah. And Sarah's raising her hand. She's done I, this before. I have for years of my life, guys. I like, I, it's so disgusting and I know it and I admit it and I'm sorry to my body. Well, guess what? You're not the only one. People have written in. They've bitten their nails before. We now know there are hookworms living under our nails. And probably in my body now. What do I need to do? Well, I need to go back to flossing. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll address your, your issues with ba- nail biting. But you guys... <laughs> I went to the dentist as well, and I have great teeth. The problem is I still have baby teeth in my molars, which is like 4% of the population. So anytime that one of those baby teeth starts dying, which I've had, she said, since I was a child, um, I have to get an implant, which is like $3,000 a pop. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I might as well get gold plated teeth at this point. (laughs) So I've got three or four implants, this and that. Besides that, my teeth are in good condition. But have you guys had this deep cleaning that includes a laser in your gums? Yep. It's awful. It's the worst. I love the laser. You are bizarre and I don't (laughs) understand you. So I've had a full thing of that. It's like $1,800 to get it done. You have to like remortgage your house in order to have your teeth <laughs> clean now. So I went in for just a regular checkup and cleaning. Cause I took a time off over COVID as most of us did around our well being. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the last place you want to go during COVID is the dentist. Right. And so I go in finally and she's like, I mean, I've had this full under gum laser thing done. Like, yeah, it's brutal. And she's like, Oh, you're uh, my recommendation. I'm going to have the dentist come in and look, you need one filling, but then we're going to have to do that cleaning again. And it was so painful for me. Mm. Really? It was, I don't know why. Like I have no idea why. So I come back for the filling and I just said, Hey, I do. I have, can I just get a straight up regular cleaning? Like, I just want you to go in with the brush, get in there, you know, how they scrape stuff out, which Mm -hmm. is painful and awful. Mm. And she goes, oh, we don't do that if we think you need the laser cleaning. It sort of doesn't make any sense to do that. Hmm. And she's like, but you could do like one fourth of your mouth at a time if it's a financial (laughs) issue. And I'm like, what the hell about me makes you think it's a financial issue? Of course it is. It's absolutely a financial issue that I have to put $6,000 into my mouth every year. Like what? So anyway, they act like flossing is... The all like they're like, well, if, you know, flossing is only three dollars, so maybe you could do that more. <laughs> but who are these people that floss every day? Like, I want to be like you, and I'm asking for help because I understand I'm gonna have to get this laser thing again. But, like, are you the same people who like put your shoes back where they belong <laughs> at the end of the night and like make your bed? And if so, how do I become more like you? Because if $3 floss is going to help me from saving and getting lasered every year, I will do it. Yeah. I, 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 um, I had someone say to me one time, um, I don't know anybody gay. Oh, and I thought to myself, I know this person and I know this person's community. And I'm like, you just don't know that you know somebody exactly. gay, right? Mm, and so right. I'm I'm feeling similarly about this. I want to say I don't know anybody who flosses <laughs> every day. And maybe I do and I just don't know that they floss every day. We do and it was asked on the podcast during an interview with Jen Allen. Oh, Jen Allen she flosses, flosses every, every day. day. Of course Jen Allen flosses every day. Like she's kind of amazing and perfectly perfect i don't understand it like i do you cut corners anywhere that's my question if you floss every day tell okay if i'm gonna have to start flossing twice a day is what they want i mean that's insane (laughs) insane and i recognize i love the guys with the plastic thing that you can just push them in between your teeth that's nice yeah so that's the way but you know, and then things bleed and then you're like, I'm dying. And it just, <laughs> but like, that is my question. Number one, how can I start implementing that? 
that for my list for our listeners i just said my listeners <laughs> wow <laughs> tell it like it is Moose. tell it like it is that is not what i meant it was a freudian <laughs> slip i apologize but secondly if i'm going to become one of these people where am i allowed to cut corners mm. are you just are you are you zipped up and in ship shape and you were a military something that that is my question yeah yeah maybe so I, I, I'm curious to hear feedback from our listeners. I also want to mention that we asked for feedback from our listeners last week who have had experiences with the paranormal, with like his mysterious ways, like when quote unquote <laughs> God. Yeah. Like strange and unexplained. The X-Files. Yeah. it's it, And we asked for feedback and we want to just say thank you so much for all of you who have written in and called in and emailed in and texted in, like, thank you so much. And just so you know, we didn't mention your stories this week because we are compiling stories to have an entire episode yes. of people's stories of um, really bizarre phenomena. So um, thank you so much for reaching out and for your stories. They have been fascinating, fascinating to read. Um, and, and, and I just want to say before we wrap up here, um, Sarah, talking about all this flossing stuff, do you have intentions of including in your post-production the sounds of one flossing one's teeth? Absolutely. Okay. Wait, what is the sound of flossing? Oh, the like snap down in where you slice your gum and it starts bleeding and then the snap back out. And then there's like the kind of like, you know, it's like there's got to be a little bit of spit in there. Yeah. I imagine it going the, right here. The reason I'm asking is I was in a uh, continuing education class last weekend and one of my friends in that class, her name is Lindsay and she's super awesome. Um, she said to me, she goes, I have a bone to pick with producer Sarah. And I was like, oh. okay, Ooh. what is the bone that you have to pick? And she said, I have misophonia. And some of the sounds that she uses in the podcast, like I just can't, I just can't tolerate. And I was like, uh. whoa, you just taught me a word and a thing that I don't know. So misophonia is a condition in which individuals experience intense anger and <laughs> disgust when they are confronted with sounds made by other human beings. Is it like the chewing issue? Uh -huh. Like, Yeah, like eating a banana. Uh-huh. I can't handle certain chewing, so I can appreciate that. And Sarah's sounds are intentionally meant to create mesothelioma. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Isn't that like the cancer that happens because of asbestos? asbestos? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, if you want to write in and tell us your unexplained stories for that specific episode, you can email us hello at catandmoosepodcast.com or you can call us at 1-866-KATMOO5. That's 1-866-528-6665. Thanks for listening, y'all. Bye. Bye. Love you, Moose. Love you, Sarah. Love you, Cat. Love you. Special thanks to our producer, Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Cat and Moose is a BP production.